Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to The Conversation. I'm your host, Roxanne Grace. Guys, today I am talking to singer, songwriter, Joel Vaughn. You don't want to miss it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this conversation. As promised, I will bring Joel in in just a moment. But first, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to our channel. Also, check out our other social profiles, the exact same handle at Dream Label Group. Check out our website. There you will find a mailing list that you can join to be some of the first to hear brand new music from Dream, including artists like Joel Vaughn. Our website is dreamlabelgroup.com. Also on our website, guys, you will find a link to subscribe to our podcast. We are pretty much everywhere. You can find us at iHeartRadio, uh, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Pandora, and so many more. So check that out, guys. Guys, my guest today is so rad. He's so much fun. We were actually just hanging out, doing, working on a little bit of the Dream Christmas special. He'll talk a little bit more about his track on the upcoming Dream Christmas special. He is a singer, songwriter. He's a worship leader. He's a multi-billboard charting artist and, of course, a good old family man. Let's bring in the man himself. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm hanging out in Texas, drinking my Texas water. My Topo Chico. Yeah, that awesome. sounds like that sounds like a plan. That sounds like a good thing to do. You know, we actually were just hanging out on another link, uh, working on the Christmas special for Dream, and it is going to be a ton of fun. We are so pumped over here. Let's talk a little bit about your track that we have on the upcoming Dream Christmas Volume Five. Yeah, uh, so I wrote it with my friend Ross King. Uh, he's he's one of those people that I can lean on and call on when I when I. Uh, mm -hmm when I really want to focus on a track that I think is, is really important. And also when I need somebody to bail me out No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Ross is such a good guy. No, when we were, uh, when we were putting the song together, uh, I had actually produced the track three years ago and let it sit on my hard drive. And mm -hmm. I was going through, uh, my hard drive just to kind of look at some demos that I had done. And, um, I asked Ross, I was like, Hey, uh, I have this song and I know it doesn't like have a holiday feel quite yet, but like, would you want to write a Christmas song with me on it? And he was like, yeah. And so we started talking about, uh, you know, some things, uh, like how this year has gone and how weird it's mm. been and how welcome Christmas holidays are going to be. Not that they aren't any other year, but this year, especially because of how crazy it is. And so when we were talking about the lyrics and what we wanted to say, um, we just started talking about like how crazy this year was and, um, how it's kind of hard to have Christmas joy right now, because you're like, can we just get this year over with kind of thing? Right. 2021. Uh, but that the, the season of Christmas, um, reminds me that, um, like remembering Jesus's birth, remembering mm -hmm. what he's done for us, uh, makes me feel like a kid on Christmas morning every time we think about that and we talk about it. So that's what the song is about. Yes, I love it. I actually, if any of our viewers are like me, we cannot get to Christmas soon enough. And so that's why we're we're getting started early over here at Dream. We're very excited uh, for this upcoming special and the part that you have to play in it. It's, uh, it's going to be amazing. So make sure you guys check that out. Joel, you know, you and I were talking uh, just a little bit before we came on here and you have an incredible incredible uh, weight loss testimony. Can yeah. you maybe bring us a little bit on that journey, what that looked like? How much weight did you lose? You said something like a hundred pounds. How? A hundred and four pounds. Exactly. Oh my goodness. Uh, so it, it, it all kind of starts uh, when, when I was in college. Um, I have to go that far back because when I graduated high school, I weighed 125 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> so yeah. I was a bean pole. Um, but there were just some, some things that happened early on in life, uh, that I never really got help for. Um, mm -hmm. and I never sought any counseling for. And so I just kind of ate my feelings, so to speak. Um, and I, I worked at a restaurant and, uh, instead of gaining the freshman 15, I gained the freshman 50, uh, which <laughs> it sounds funny, but, um, and so <laughs> over the co course of a year after my second year in, in, in college, uh, by 2006, um, my wife and I, uh, we got married in 2006 and, um, I gained another 50 pounds over the course of, uh, of that. And 
Then I found out by 20 years old that I had high blood pressure. And wow. I, didn't know, I didn't know what that That's meant. 20, 20, wow. Yeah. yeah and, and not just like kind of high. Like I went to the doctor uh, because my eye was killing me and I had pink eye and I knew that, but I, I had done something to it and ruptured the vitreous or the fluid or whatever. So my eye had swollen up and I couldn't even see and I thought I was going blind. So I went to the doctor for that and they're like, yeah, yeah, your eye's going to be fine. Your, your vision's probably going to be a little bit messed up and your depth perception's a little messed up, but we're not focused on that. We're focused on your blood pressure. And I was like, well, what's a good number? And they're like, well, 120 over 80 is normal. And I was like, well, what's mine? And they said, well, we've been consistently checking you all. And I'm, I'm talking like doctors and nurses coming into the emergency room probably for several hours wondering like they're like he's calm right now and his blood pressure is this high and i'm i'm starting to freak out I'm what like, was it it was 176 over 111 and oh, i wasn't even at my highest weight at this point i was only 200 pounds um so i had i'd actually gained about 75 75 pounds at this point um but i was on a diet of lots of dr pepper lots of store -bought, store bought pizza lots of ramen and everything that college students eat um but probably kind of going overboard um so Fast forward to four years after that, I had an injury um, because I, I, I caught the flu and I was uh, lifting PA equipment because we had had a gig and I, I, I caused myself to have an injury and then I really couldn't exercise or do anything. And so I, I essentially packed on another 40 pounds at that point. And so uh, here I was like, you know, 110 pounds heavier than I was when I graduated high school. Everybody gains a little bit of weight when they graduate from high school. That's normal. Right. Um, but not a hundred pounds or 110 pounds, uh, roughly. And so I, I, I had surgery in 2010 finally for this injury. Uh, so I had this injury for three years and I waited way longer than any person should. Uh, and so, uh, after, after I had surgery, my immune system tanked and, uh, I began to have, uh, these streaks show up in my legs and I was like, what's going on? Uh, and I would wake up in the middle of the night, just pouring, pouring sweat. And when I say sweat, like the bed would be soaked and my wife would be like, babe, what's going on? Are you okay? And I'm like, I, I don't know. And then suddenly I started having this pain in all of my joints. Um, and this is happening over a course of weeks. Uh, wow. And so I started having pain in my joints that I, I'd never felt before. And then one morning I remember waking up and I couldn't even move. I couldn't move my arm or anything without feeling like I had broke, like the only way to describe is if you had a, like a, a sticker or broken glass inside of your joints. Oh it, my word. it hurt so bad. Why? Uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that. Oh my uh, no, nobody could figure it out. Uh, I was 247 pounds. Um, I was the most, Wait, which is, which is so hard to imagine because you're so tiny. Now. Yeah. And I'll, I'll show you a picture. A lot of people will be like, that's fake. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, my, my wife was there. She, she knows it was real. Um, so I was 247 pounds. I uh, uh, was sicker than I'd ever been. Um, I had just, uh, and here, here you go. There's, that's, that's me. No, that's, that's, that, not, that's not you. That, that was right. That was right after uh, I got, that's right after I got better. Wow. wow. Um, and so I, I'd, I'd never been that sick in my life. I'd never been in that much pain in my life. Uh, the doctors determined I had cellulitis in my legs. Um, I, my blood had gone septic. Uh, so that, was a lot of it. And then my liver function was very, very low. Um, and so I developed uric acid. So gout in every joint in my body. And normally people only get gout in their big toe. Talk to anyone who's ever had gout before and they'll tell you it's the worst pain they've ever had. And they've only really? had it in their big toe. Yeah. It's pretty terrible. Um, and so, uh, I, I was so sick. I, I, I cried more that year than I ever have in my mm. life. And, uh, I don't think I've cried since because <laughs> it, it was that painful. Um, mm. And so uh, I had a group of doctors that went to my church because uh, I was a worship leader at a church in town uh, that helped help me figure this out and uh, help cover the cost of a lot of my medical bills because oh, they, wanted to see me, they wanted to see me well. And then they figured out you have gout, man. Like we don't know why you have gout. You're only 22 years old. Um, or actually, I guess I was 24 maybe. So 2010. Yeah, uh, I was 24 years old and they were like, you have the body of an 80 year old man and you're only 24. Wow. And if you keep this up, you're not, you're, you know, you're not going to make it to 30 kind of thing. And so that was my wake up call. And, uh, I didn't realize how close to dying I was, uh, how many infections, like 
people don't just walk away from it the way I did without long standing repercussions. Like, uh, and you know, I still don't know all of what it did to me, but I knew this, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to lay down and take it and die. And so I was like, God gave me a second chance. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I started running in 2010 and I, I couldn't run, uh, gosh, even 800 meters without like feeling like I was going to kill over. And I would take my shoes off and my, my ankles would literally be black, uh, cause my circulation was so bad. And wow. so, uh, I, I quit this is how, and this is how I did it. Um, I stopped drinking soda immediately. So I, this is soda water. This is my treat. This is, that's why I drink. This is the, this is my soda. Uh, so I, I stopped drinking soda. I was addicted to Dr. Pepper and coffee drinks. Like I still drink coffee, but I was drinking mochas, like two, like tall boy mochas every day. Plus, you know, probably four or five Dr. Peppers. I replaced that with water. Um, and I lost probably 25 pounds the first month, just quitting soda. Get out of town. Yeah. And the first month. The first month I lost 20, 25 pounds, somewhere around there. Just, just from cutting out soda yep. and your mochas. Yep. So just watching what you're putting into your body did that for you in the first month. Yes. Praise and then uh, I started getting my diet kind of, I, I didn't really take my diet as seriously. And I, and I, I got to tell you the truth. I, I kind of fall off the wagon every now and then. And I, I get back on the pizza train. I'm probably on the pizza train right now. But I've I've also just finished a half marathon, so I'm like pizza. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, isn't it isn't it good though for your body sometimes to cheat a little bit? Yeah, yeah, you want to cheat a little bit, but sometimes yeah. I have a tendency to cheat a lot of bit. So. Oh, I cheat a lot of it. Okay, I get <laughs> so anyway, it. Anyway, uh, I slowly over the course of a year, um, I, I started like taking my health a little bit more seriously. I dropped from uh, 247 ish to uh, 200, 210. Um, and then, uh, and at this point you're really inspired because you're like, I know I can do this since you've yeah. already lost so much weight. Yes. Wow. So, so like, go ahead. No, I think that's so cool. I'm totally into this. Yeah. So 2011, um, I, I had focused on the spiritual or the physical side of things in 2010 mm. and I hadn't really focused on the spiritual and mental side of things. Um, mm. cause a lot of that was done on my own willpower and done on, uh, done by just kind of taking some practical steps. I didn't think about the fact that there were some underlying mental health and spiritual health things that I had never really visited. And so in 2011, I decided to, I was working at a very large church in Amarillo, Texas, the second largest church in that area. Um, and I was one of like nine worship leaders there. And I knew that I was not going to get any healthier or do any better uh, until I walked away from my dream job. My daughter, Olivia had, was just born. Um, and when she was born, I was holding her in my hands and I was like, I've got to be better for you. And that's mm -hmm. literally what I thought. I remember her little eyes popped open and I know she couldn't see me, but she, it was like, she was staring at me the night after she was born wow. and I was just looking at her and my wife snapped a picture of me. I didn't know she was, and I was just like, Whoa, like I'm responsible for this life. And I want to be alive to see her um, graduate high school and to be there. And so, uh, I took myself out of the equation as a worship pastor at the church that I worked at. And I worked on me, uh, spiritually and, uh, and some issues that were in mine and my wife's marriage. And I, uh, just decided to be a regular guy, a regular dad, um, and have a nine to five job and stop doing wow. music and everything for a while. So for 18 months, uh, I, I just went into counseling and tried to figure out what my identity was because I found my identity in what I did, uh, which was Joel, the the songwriter, the worship leader, um, and and the guy who was like you know local famous, I guess you could say, because I I, I big fish small pond kind of thing, and I, I walked away from that to really get to know how God saw me and who I was to God and not just this job that I kind of hid behind. You right. Know? And so when I did that, um, it was like, uh, a lot of different things were just falling off of me spiritually and mentally, like a lot of, uh, oppression, depression, just stuff like that just kind of melted away. And, uh, with that pounds started melting away. I started going to wow. the gym, uh, more frequently. Um, and I, I lost, you know, another, uh, so I was like 40, so another 60, 64 pounds ish. 
uh, over the course of those 18 months. And so um, I, I guess it was it was a period of, of about a year, year and a half that I lost over 104 pounds. Uh, I got to the point where I was like, I was getting kind of worried because I was I was working out pretty religiously seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. And I got to the point where I realized like I may be replacing some food addictions with workout addiction. And so I <laughs> kind of had to slow it down a little bit because I dropped to 134 pounds and that was a little too small. Uh, but I was I was trying to train for an Ironman race. <laughs> and uh, I, I injured my back actually uh, overdoing it, lifting a speaker again, didn't learn my lesson the last time. Uh, so I injured my back. I, I ripped a muscle in my back and that, that didn't totally take me out, but I had to really focus on my diet because I couldn't overcompensate with working out anymore. Exactly. So uh, I, I went from 134 to now I, I'm at like 150, 154 pounds, and I've been able to maintain 150 to 160 pounds. And it's all, you know, been by the grace of God, one, but two, uh, because I took some practical steps uh, by drinking a lot of water, uh, watching what I eat. I counted calories for a while, but that's not something that will create lasting change. You need right. calories. You need, you need carbs, believe it or not. Uh, you need protein and you need a lot of vegetables. The vegetables is where I struggle because I like vegetables, <laughs> but I like my carbs and my meat so much more. I, I don't think I could ever be vegan. I mean, you could, you can do anything, but like that would be hard for me personally. I, I completely agree with that. I have a lot of friends that are vegan and I totally respect that. You know, yeah. I understand, I understand why people make that choice to go vegan, but I'm the same way. I don't think I could, I could do without my meat. My, my <laughs> bass player is vegan and I'm a bad influence on him. Every time we go out on the road, I'm like cheeseburger. And he was like, why are you doing this to me? I love right. <laughs> and he'll eat a cheeseburger and I'll be like, I'm, I'm sorry. I just made you stumble hard, <laughs> but I'm not going to so, stop eating cheeseburgers. So how long, how long has it been that you've been able to consistently stay at about 150 160 pounds so uh since 2000 impressive. 2011 wow or 12 12 12 and so. that's drinking water a lot of water mm -hmm. on a regular basis and being conscientious of what you eat but still making sure you're getting the right foods and the right amount of calories and stuff like that it's pretty impressive joel it's pretty impressive so somebody watching this program uh that's so desires to you know get to the place where they can keep something off consistently like that what advice would you give uh be patient with yourself mm. um don't always rely on the numbers you see on a scale they don't tell they don't tell the whole picture um and in fact uh you could lose 50 pounds and still be just as unhealthy as you were when you started um it's mm -hmm. not about losing the weight as much as it is how you do it um, and you need to do it in a healthy way and, and healthy, a healthy way that's sustainable is going to take a lot longer than what some diet is going to help. Like there, some, there, there are, you know, certain measures that a doctor might take to help you get some pounds off of you faster because it, it needs to be done quickly. Um, but that's not the kind of sustainable weight loss. And I'm not a doctor. I should probably say that. And don't take all of my advice, but uh, <laughs> take, take it for what it's worth. I, I'm a guy that lost 104 pounds. Um, but uh, don't always rely on the numbers on a scale. You're going to go up sometimes. And then in a couple of weeks, you'll notice that, oh, it's, it is coming down. Uh, if I am patient, be patient with yourself, give it time um, and try not to try not to cheat. You know, one of the hardest things for me, uh, was avoiding chocolate. Like, and, and one of the ways I would reward myself is I would eat little tiny chocolate bars and I've had like three of them today. I was going to say, how would you do that? That's like, that's like a, a task of its own avoiding chocolate. Yeah. Well, and it's because I worked in an office. Uh, I was in IT for a while and there were all these little old ladies that were like, would you like some chocolate out of the candy dish? And Absolutely. I was like, oh, I can't, you know, I'll just take seven or 12. Exactly. <laughs> and yeah, I exactly. Well, I love this story. I think it is so inspiring. And I actually think this is the only time that I can think of hearing that uh, pink eye was actually a blessing in disguise. <laughs> right. You right. went to the hospital all just to check out your pink eye. Am I correct? And, and then, it saved my life. Yeah. And, and it saved your life. Well, praise God. Let's talk a little bit about your music journey. Um, I know you were just mentioning when you were telling the story about your weight loss journey mm -hmm. that you it sound like even in college that you were already a musician back then. So yep. is this something that you knew as a young guy that this is what you wanted to pursue or how did you get into music? Uh, I got into music uh, because my mom was a worship leader. <clears throat> so early on, my dad, my dad was a youth pastor. 
uh and my dad did a lot of different things uh he was a truck driver he's a youth pastor he was in and those are two very very good dad things. that's amazing <laughs> he was in he was in the Super military hero. yeah he was in the military so he was in the air force um and he retired in the in the mid 90s and so when he got out uh he was doing more of the youth pastor thing and my mom was uh the worship leader my mom was the one that actually led me to jesus uh in wow. 1992 Amen. um in amory mississippi and uh she was my role model and i i looked up to her so much and i loved what she did i used to watch her play the piano and sing and i would just sit by her and just in awe and i was like i want to do that and so i started singing pretty early uh, and what's funny is i remember being in columbus mississippi on the air force base and one of my favorite songs at the time was a song that no kid today is even going to know Hardly any adults probably remember it, but it was the song by this guy, Donnie Osmond, called Soldier of Love. And it, it was my jam, man. Like I, <laughs> I remember getting on top of the air conditioner unit outside of my house because it would blow air up and like you know, <laughs> doing like the Michael Jackson thing. Like, oh, totally, totally. And so I, I would be singing Soldier of Love. And I was like, man, I want to be a singer back then, like when I was like five. And uh, so my, my family thought it was just the funniest thing ever that I was, you know, into that but then they started noticing that i could actually sing when i remember singing in the car when i was five years old and i didn't think anything of the fact that i was matching pitch which of everything that was on the radio and i saw my parents turned around looking at me and my right. sister and everyone was like he's like singing singing and he's like five and i was Whoa. just like i was just like what does can't everybody kind of thing and by the time I was seven, I sang my very first song in church, and it was a song called My Places With You by this artist uh, named Clay Cross, uh, who was a CCM artist in the 90s. And back then, uh, they, you, would, you would take your accompaniment track up to, uh, up to the person that was on stage, and they would inevitably, inevitably put it in the wrong way, the, the <laughs> tape, and it would probably be in the wrong key or something, but this time it didn't. So that was my, that was my first time to sing in church was when I was seven. And uh, so it just kind of... It kind of grew from there. Uh, my my whole family, we're all very musical. We were uh, unofficially a traveling family band, which is kind of oh. funny. And so that's very cool. Yeah. So we we did these like uh, Southern gospel songs anytime we'd show up somewhere. And I remember singing Beulah Land, this this Southern gospel song that everyone knew knew our family, and they were like, "Well, you guys sing Beulah Land." I was like, "Beulah Land, one more time." Now now I would love to do it. Back then I was like, "I've sung this song a million times." Uh, but it, now I, I would, I would, I would, I cherish it and I would love to go back and do it. But, um, wow. so, I, I'm learning so much about you, Joel. I had no idea. Oh, there, there's, there's so much. You, you <laughs> don't want to like close the can before, you know? Yeah. You know, right. Yeah. Right. But, uh, by, by 2001, uh, my brother and I, uh, were the only two siblings left at home. Uh, my other siblings are about, uh, nine, eight and seven years older than me. Um, and so, uh, nine, eight and six years older than me. Well, so, your mom is a superhero too. She is. I mean, she had five kids before she was Goodness. 30. So yeah, oh. yeah, I can't even imagine that now I have two kids and I'm 34 and I'm like, I would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. We do not give her enough credit. Uh, we don't, we don't shower her in enough gifts on mother's day. She, she I, I agree. I agree. Keep She's preaching there. that too. And that's amazing. Yeah. Mothers, we are amazing and we are so special. Yeah. We deserve that. We absolutely, absolutely. deserve to start with special gifts. I know that you came on board over here, uh, with dream in about, about 2016. Mm -hmm. What led up to that? Uh, so, uh, prior to that, I, I kinda, I, I was, I was leading worship, uh, for, um, a lot of youth groups and, and doing like touring regionally, uh, cause I was in the Texas panhandle, which is the Northwest side of Texas. Um, and so that's between New Mexico and, uh, Oklahoma, Colorado and Kansas. Kind and of it gets cold up there. Doesn't it get cold? It up does. There? It gets that's very cold. cold. You're the yeah, first I've, I've driven knew. through in a snowstorm and I was like, wait, this yeah. is Texas. This isn't supposed to be like this. Yeah. Texas. Oh. I mean, one of the worst snowstorms we ever had was in 2015. And I think we had 27 inches of snowfall in less than no. like 12 hours. Like it was a lot. Actually, I feel like that defeats the whole purpose of, of going to Texas or living in Texas. It does. Like, and it gets extremely oh, hot here yeah. too. Uh, it can get up to, I think, I don't remember what the hottest has ever got here, but I've seen 117 degrees in Amarillo. I've also seen negative 25. So wow. yeah, God it's, it's bless extreme. you guys. That's God. why I don't live here anymore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Cause you're in Texas right now. So you guys, you guys live back in, uh, Nashville. In, in Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Crazy. Or the All weather right. is a little more normal. 
in Nashville. Absolutely. You guys have the four seasons in Nashville, am I yes, correct? Four actual seasons. <laughs> Okay, let's talk a little bit about your single, Already Done, and I know your album, uh, Louder Than the Lies, is coming out um, January 29th, and pre-orders start uh, November 6th. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind this album and, and all that it stands for. Yeah, so uh, I've been working on it for pretty much a year now, but m a bulk of the content and a bulk of the writing happened uh during all of the pandemic shutdowns so i uh, uh in march on march 3rd a tornado hit our town that we live in mount juliet tennessee and took out a lot of houses killed quite a few people wow. and uh so after that uh, i helped with a lot of the cleanup and in, in our town and, and handing out water uh, to volunteers who were uh, chainsawing trees off of people's houses like most there were houses that were just completely gone totally wooded areas um, were now just flat open plains. It was the oh. thing. And so that happened. And then I had two tour dates uh, in Texas. I had one in Amarillo, or no, one, three tour dates, one in Amarillo, one in Lubbock, and then one in Austin. And uh, by the time we got to the one in Austin, it was March 13th, I think. No, it was March 16th. Um, and March 16th was the last thing I did. And everything started shutting down. Um, and so we were just like, are we going to be able to get out of Texas and get home? So we wow. get out of Texas and we get home. A tornado had just hit. My kids haven't been to school since the tornado hit because it, it knocked it. Uh, it destroyed like five schools and ours, I think, had a little bit of damage, but nothing major. But because of all of that, they were trying to make sure everything was safe. And so my kids didn't go back to school uh, after the tornado. And then when COVID hit, that was during our spring break. And so we were wondering, are we going to go back to school? My kids didn't go back to school till August. So from March 3rd all the way to August, my family was at home and I knew I had to finish an album. And I was like, how am I going to do this? Like with my family, my studio was literally in my kitchen right now. Uh, so there's no way to get around that. And so uh, one of the first songs we wrote uh, is one of the songs that's going to, well, two of the songs. Uh, uh, one of them that, that we wrote first uh, was a song called Make the Most of It. And it was literally about that uh, we we were talking about how the tornado had just hit Nashville and had hit my town specifically, uh, and uh, how the storm was something we were not prepared for. It hit at you know just just around midnight, one o'clock in the morning, and woke us all up, and we were hunkered in our uh, in our closet, just wondering like, is is this going to be it? Is this the end? Kind of thing. And then we go wow. through this worldwide pandemic. Um, and so we went from one freak out stage to the next, uh, like I could show you pictures, uh, of, of the devastation of the storm that hit our town. And, and it's mind blowing that more people didn't die. Um, mm. but like I, what was beautiful about all of everything that happened was seeing our town and our city just want to help and want to rebuild almost immediately. 20,000 people came to Mount Juliet from all over the United States uh, to help in the cleanup process. The national guard was there. It was, it was amazing. And so that was inspiring and that inspired the, the song, the most of it. Um, and so, uh, that's kind of where we were and what we were thinking about what we were writing for it. And while I was writing for it. Um, and so, uh, we, I got together with a couple more friends and we were working on my current single already done. Um, and I was thinking like, how am I going to fund this album? Uh, I, all my tour dates are canceled. I have no way to like just pay for an album out of my own pocket at this point. And so I was like, you know what? God's got this. If we can make it through a tornado and our town can do, uh, and, and he can enable us to, to like help rebuild, like I can trust him that he's got it and it's already done. Mm -hmm. um, and so my friend Jonathan and our friends, Jonathan and Micah approached me with this track that they had started working on. And when I heard it, I was like, yeah, man, let's, let's finish the song. Let's write it. And it talks about how, uh, you can, when you have mountains in your life, you can run at them. Like they're already moved and you can face down, chase down your Goliath. And uh, like, you know, he's going to lose, uh, you know, and it, we use the metaphor, maybe your waters haven't parted yet, but your time is going to come. Cause when our father makes a promise, it's already done. And so that's the way I looked at it when I was approaching funding the record and like that, that was my theme song yeah, and it's already, we got it. it's already done. I don't need to worry about it. And, uh, when I approached it that way, like it, God took care of it. 
and uh, it, it was more than funded beyond uh, anything I expected. And it, it, I personally believe, uh, not just because of financial reasons, but uh, I personally believe this is the best record I have worked on yet. Um, I, I got to do a few things that I normally in the past didn't get to do because so many people have wanted to chip in and help and be a part of it that I, I was really surprised, honestly. Um, they were like, hey, I want to help. I want to be a part of this. And there were people that I actually had to turn down help on this record. I've never. Wow. Had That's a good problem to have. Yeah. That's I, a great I like, problem to have. Yeah. I was like, I, I would love for you to produce a song, but like, I. I have so many songs. Like I, I was offered free production from several producers and I was like, man, that's, that's incredible. Uh, I might take you up on that, but I may not need it. <laughs> so it was, it, it's just been a really cool season to see how faithful God is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of the things that I want to remind people is to be obedient and, and to be faithful and trust him. Because if you do that, he, he's going to do amazing things in your life. And that's what the th central theme of this album is. And the fact that you don't need to buy into the lies um, that, you know, it's, it's impossible or, or something is impossible. Like losing weight, for instance, is not impossible. Whatever your goal is. Um, if, if you are obedient to God and trust in him, um, you may not see it right now. You may not see it in 20 years and you may not see it till the other side of heaven, but he is faithful. He is good. He's got it. And yeah, don't buy into the lies of anything else that Satan's trying to tell you, trying to tell you. The entire heart behind this album is so timely. Thank you so much for being faithful and stepping out of your comfort zone and just trusting God that he already had it done and 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 coming out with this. We're excited about we're We're loving uh, your single uh, already done. And we're excited about the album, guys. Don't forget that that drops uh, January 29th and, uh, and pre-order start on November 6th. You definitely need to get your hands on that. It's super inspiring. Um, Joel, tell me, is there a scripture or something that God has spoken to your heart or speaks to your heart on a regular basis that keeps you going? Oh my goodness. Uh, you put me on the spot, but I have, a, uh, that's I have what a I'm doing. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I get this question a lot. So like, uh, my favorite scripture right now is, uh, John chapter 15, verse seven. And it says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Boom. Amen. Uh, I'm not going to drop this mic cause it's yeah, too. Not, yeah. Maybe don't drop your mic. Yeah. Probably not a good idea. Um, Great. So tell us, where can we uh, find out more about you? Where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on uh, joelvonmusic.com. I'm pretty active on Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash joelvonmusic uh, and instagram.com forward slash joelvonofficial. That's the only one that's different. Uh, I don't know why. I just felt like being official. And then Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, Joel Von Music as well. But I, I'm not really on Twitter that often. That's just a deep, dark place that I try to avoid. I check in and I'm like, yep, it's still on fire. Bye. <laughs> it's still there. It is. It is still there. Absolutely. It's still there. Great. Great. Well, Joel, thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule uh, to share all this with us. We learned so much about you today and we're so glad we did. So thank you so much, brother. And uh, we'll talk soon. Well, guys, it's all the time that we have with Joel Vaughn. I know that this blessed you as much as it blessed me. Guys, as always, want to hear from you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or even ideas uh, for upcoming programs, reach us at dreamtheconversation at gmail.com. Until next week, stay blessed in him. We'll see you then. Oh, 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 oh,